Hello my lovely people, welcome to my Holiday Edit channel. My name is Marina and this is a part 2 of my series about Russia. My first episode was about how to get to Russia when it's under sanctions. I will leave link in description, you can watch it or you can just go to my playlist which is called Russia. So, eventually you got to Russia. Depends which part of Russia you go, it could take days to get there. I go always to Moscow because I'm originally from Moscow and I, all my business, anything I have to do, I always go to Moscow. Very, very first time it took me just under 48 hours, then I found shorter route, which is just over 24 hours. So, you got there, you need to stay somewhere. Moscow is the largest city in Europe and the single most popular city in the European continent with an official population just under 13 million but in reality it's about 19. This is a multicultural and multinational city. Some reports indicate that only 2% of Moscow's population are actually from Moscow, meaning have grand-grandparents that hail from the city. My mom and dad are both moved to Moscow in the 20s from other regions. About half of Moscow's population comes from other cities in Russia and another immigrants from nearby countries, mostly ex-Soviet Union. This is a beautiful city with a lot of to do. In fact, there are more than 400 museums, almost 50 parks and forests, more than 700 public gardens and boulevards, and thousands of bars and restaurants to entertain you at night. Even I'm from Moscow myself originally, I don't have any more family in Moscow. So every time I go there, I have to stay in the hotels because my closest relatives live quite far away, closest one about an hour and a half from Moscow, even if it's a Moscow region. Moscow has a large variety of the hotels, starting from a shared room and apartments, two-star hotels, hostels, capsule hotels, five-star hotels, even palaces. Yes, you got it right. If you go to Moscow, you actually can stay in a real palace. And I did stay in one of those, so if you keep watching this video, you will see what it's like. Before we go any further, I would like to remind you, please subscribe to my channel, don't forget to hit that like button and ring the bell that you don't miss any future episodes about Moscow and about Russia. So first of all, what are the two star hotels in Moscow looks like? Let's have a look. This time I stay in a different hotel. I have single room. Room is very tiny, but this has private bathroom. Extremely clean, have TV. For less than 20 pounds a night, you can go wrong. Look at those pictures. Really well done. Like New York has Manhattan, Moscow has its Moscow City. Where Moscow's cityscape was once dominated by Stalin's seven sister skyscrapers, this is no more. Moscow City is a home to eight of the Russia's ten tallest buildings, six of which exceeded 300 meters in height, and four of them are in the top five tallest buildings in Europe. Sorry, but pride and joy of London as the shard is only the seventh. Each of Moscow City's skyscrapers was designed by its own architect, making the cluster of skyscrapers a unique experience. Aside from being a site of architectural wonder, it's also become a tourist attraction and a popular place to visit. There are a few hotels here and I decided to stay in one of them. I stayed in a capsule hotel on the 84th floor in the Federation Tower, which is the third tallest building in Europe. This is where I'm staying the, this time, in one of the towers, called Federal Tower.
you notice they are no buttons, flow buttons, because with this card you can only get to the floor you're supposed to be. And I'm going on floor 84. This is an island room and this is the view you get from the island room and this view is the reason why I booked this hotel. It's a bit dirty window though. When I was in Moscow, I had the chance to stay in the real palace, Petrovsky Dvorets. It's a five-star hotel and I was very excited to be there. So let's have a look what the staying in the palace looks like. For me, it's very conveniently located. It's five minutes walk from underground station and there's only one stop from the Belaruska train, uh, train station where I'm going to go to Belarus tomorrow because that's it. I'm on my way home now and I'm coming back through the Belarus Ooh, Lithuania, not Estonia, it's a lot shorter. And we're going through the Petrovsky Park, which is beautiful, especially in the summer, it's really green. So there, you can see a little bit through the trees. This is the palace. This is a park. And you can see there's an underground station, like literally five minutes walk. And if you would like to stay here next time, station called Dinamo, underground station. You probably will say, wow, it's palace. And you will be 100% right. I am staying at Petrovsky Palace Hotel. So there, on the back, it's actual palace, but you can't get there without the excursion. And the front of the palace has been turned into five-star hotel where I'm gonna stay just for one night. So, how your room looks if you stay in a palace? It's very large room. What's in here? I've got walk-in wardrobe. Oh, I wish I could stay longer than a day. I've got big, big walk-in wardrobe. Table, chairs, huge, huge bed. It's not even double, it's not even king size, it's like triple bed. Huge. Dressing table. I presume if you, you can have a join room because the door is closed. And I've got a bath. Bathroom. I've got a Dressing gown, slippers. I know it's not environmentally friendly, but when I see these little tiny fancy bottles, I get so excited. 
I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm very pleased. I am very pleased. Windows here are really small, but you can see I have quite a nice courtyard view. But you see what type of windows here? They're like little round ones. Just come out of my room and found this lovely country house. So this is just outside of my room. You can see that this is sort of part of the palace. Probably it was the ones where the servants used to live converted. Because of course the main bit of the palace is the museum now. And this side is the main entrance to the hotel. This is a restaurant where you can have breakfast and I'm going to have my dinner here. I am so tired of the traveling so much. I can't be able to go anywhere else. But I will go around because girl in the reception, really lovely girl, she said go have a look because they have a beautiful Christmas tree there. Oh, hang on, I have to put my hat on. You can see it's a low season. This table is reserved, but there's the only behind that column is only one person there, one couple, or two, one couple. The part of that is no one here. But the restaurant itself is not very expensive. This light is fantastic. It's obviously crystal chandelier, but details. So, I have beef chicks with potatoes and I know it's going to be nice, it looks nice and they cooked fresh, it's got to wait for some time. This is the entrance to the main palace but you only can get inside with the special excursion you need to book. If I have a time I might do it for tomorrow, if not, oh well, I just have to enjoy it from outside. She was about Christmas tree, it's nicely lit up. You know what interesting now, all the new. You have this beautiful palace and look, the building, all the skyscrapers in the back. Actually, until just three years ago, the hotel I'm staying in now was not open to the public. And they used this palace to meet all the foreign guests and delegations and stuff like that. And hotel only been used for those people to stay and for some sorts of special occasions like weddings and but you could not just come in and stay like I did it today. By the way, that palace hotel only cost me 60 pounds a night including breakfast. I didn't film breakfast because it's a standard buffet breakfast with freshly cooked eggs and some pancakes, but of course pancakes, it's Russia. Everybody loves pancakes in Russia. Thank you for watching my video. Again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like this video because it will help YouTube algorithm to recommend this video to other people. And do свидания for now. I see you next time.